Guitar practice session 92424. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I go over whatever I feel like I need to be practicing and then recap what I went over so you know what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap. Practice sessions hopefully providing me with a routine, allowing me to verbalize what I am thinking so that I can get it in my head better, possibly providing information for others that are working on similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody else sees a better way to do the things that I am doing, I will provide this worksheet. I do think that trying to present your thoughts to others, even if no one else is listening, is a good way to basically trying to learn the concepts. If you want access to this worksheet to do a similar process, don't worry about plagiarizing or anything like that. You can do whatever you want to the worksheet and try to do your own you know, presentations and whatnot or think through it uh, your own way. The worksheets that we will be setting up here are a little bit different than possibly other worksheets that you have worked with in that I really try to get everything going the same way. So this is some possibly some value I give that maybe a lot of people aren't doing if you find this useful. That being that the worksheet is going to be set up with the, the heavy string on top, the string closest to the ceiling, so that when I am playing the guitar and looking at the computer, I, from behind the guitar and seeing the guitar top string on top, left to right, and I can then mirror that on my worksheet top string on top, left to right. I'll also invert my guitar so it looks like I'm left-handed, so you can kind of see it in a similar fashion as though you were behind the guitar, and I'll try to even line it up. I've been working on lining it up so that the frets that I'm working on here will kind of line up to my fingering on the guitar so you can see it in terms of the whole guitar, including the nut, so I can see how many frets it's up, and then this basically bit kind of lining up to where my fingers are on on the guitar. So let me know if that is uh, useful. Uh, we're going to go into the, the Lydian mode this time in what I'm calling shape number three. The Lydian mode is what I call absolute mode number four. Remembering that I am going to be numbering the modes based on the major scale, hoping it helps us orientate ourselves just as we do like in physics, for example. Everything is relative and whatnot. There's no special place and so on and so forth. But we need to measure from some particular place or else we have no place to start from. And therefore, in Western music, that's usually going to be the major scale or Ionian mode, which if I call mode number one, the Lydian would be relative the fourth of it, which I'm going to call mode number four. So we're going to be in the Lydian mode looking at the relative positions, the first through seven, which will change based on what mode we're in, but keeping the actual mode names and numbers as absolute mode names and numbers, which will help us with some basic orientation and a little bit of math, just plus and minus, so that we can see where we are as we go through our process. Now note that the Lydian mode is the mode that I feel like is the least uh, used mode, which is going to be part of my thought process and storytelling, least used at least of the major modes. And I'm thinking now of my fretboard, I'm going to go over the thought process and try to think about it broken out into our five shapes, which is very common, breaking the fretboard into our five shapes where we can fit our fingers on, breaking the frets out into four to five frets per shape. And then within each shape, it's useful to further break down that information, which a lot of people do. It's not just me. I'm not just the weird one doing this. I've picked this information up from others. I'm just creating my own like story to try to internalize it. I've seen people break it out. Remember, there's five strings on the guitar you can break those strings out. There's five strings plus a repeat. So you can think of the guitar as a five string instrument, even though there's six strings because two of them are the same. And if I break out the strings in here, I could group the shapes together as a two note per string shape, a two note per string shape, and then a one note per string shape. Or I can break it out as possibly a three note per string shape and a two note per string shape. Those are two common ways that I've seen that other people break things out. And I think both of them have merit. So I'm going to try to go over both of them, thinking of where each mode lies within the shapes when we think about it in that format. Now, I think the this house analogy, the, the two note, two, two string, two string, one string is useful because it groups together this little box, which I think is very visible 
throughout the fretboard, right? We see that little, if you start looking for that box, you'll see it and you'll be able to define the modes, at least those four modes, if you memorize the modes in the box, because they're always gonna be the same. But the, the three string, two string shape is useful because that's basically the pentatonic shape that most people see and many people visualize the guitar as a baseline of pentatonic shapes rather than seven note uh, major shapes. So then the question is, how can I take that pentatonic shape and then convert it from a pentatonic to a major, which is gonna be of particular importance when we're not on a major scale or the minor scale, because the pentatonic works beautifully in those two scales, even if we don't add the other two notes. But if we're in say the Lydian mode, which of course uses the, the F, which is the Lydian mode is something that's usually removed from a five note pentatonic from the perspective of the major scale and the minor scale, we have to add it back. So I'm gonna to start to think about this, these shapes, which I call the hamburger and barbell, and how we're gonna add back the two other shapes to that pentatonic shape. And, and those are the two ways we'll kind of visualize the guitar. So we'll go over the modes uh, through here. We'll go over the, the steps forwards and backwards. We'll look at each of these intervals, how to finger the intervals and try to get an idea of the interval and the inverse. Now, I also was like, at the end, I start, I'm starting to think about this other, I, I toy with this idea of basically seeing the fretboard at the end. Uh, I, I like kind of look at this a little bit if you want to get into this idea of breaking out the fretboard in a two note per string shape. And I've seen other people do this. Again, I didn't like make this up myself. I've just seen other people, Some I've seen people advocate a two note per string shape. And I was thinking, well, how would that work? Because normally we break out the shape into three twos because we're trying to get our fingers within four to five frets, or we, we break it out in a three note per string in an attempt to, to have uniformity that gives us some rhythm that is similar and it lets us reach a little bit further when we try to do three notes per string kind of shapes, which would be like boom, 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 up top. If we did two notes per strings, that would probably give us a different rhythm. And I was kind of thinking about how that might work. And so I, I looked at that a little bit. Notice if I do two note per string, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, it kind of leans back to do that, which isn't something people normally do because people are used to leaning forward because the nut is over here and we're used to playing in open position and then kind of leaning forward to get more stuff. But if we start on fret five or above, or even like fret three or above, we have actually room to, to think about leaning back this way and play through the scale backwards. And if we did it that way, I think we would start to play different rhythms. This might be useful, I'm thinking, to like break out of the boxes or navigate in between the boxes, if we could see this like pattern in between the boxes, right? So that I can move from one to the other and probably give me different rhythm. If I'm playing two notes per string versus a three note per string thing, I'm probably gonna end up with different patterns if I was to emphasize or improvise with this. It's also interesting to note that basically all I'm doing here is taking like here is the if I'm looking at this pattern, this is just a major triad. And this is the actually the easiest way to see the major triad, although not the easiest way to play it because most people play like with a bar chord leaning forward. But in this way, you don't have any inversions. This is the, 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 the one, the three, and the five. And then if I went to the next note and I played the triad, it would be a minor because this would be the first major, second minor, which means you have a minor third and then the fifth. And if I just stack those on top of each other, right, these from here, here, and here, here, and I play the notes in between, that creates my two notes per string. And it's in order, right? So it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then if I did that, so that would means that this would be, if I played that, that would be like the Ionian or major scale. And if I, if I did the same thing from D and I played this bit out, this, this would be a minor, this would be the third. So if I went from here to here, this would be the third, which would be here, here, and here. And if I played that, it would be, it would be the Dorian, which would, which would be the second modes, right? D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C, D. And then I can go to here, which would be the, the if I went from E to here, this would be the Phrygian, uh, E, F, 
G, A, B, C, D, E. So if I can see like this leaning back pattern of how to play all of my triads from the top note of my scale, then I can just play the difference between those on each string and that gives me my scale, which I can easily see the modes of because the first, this, if that was the first, second, third, I could just I could just start, that would be the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, and eight, and so on. So I think that, I don't know if anybody uses that much. I don't, you know, or I don't see many people talking about like that idea. I've seen a couple, but I'd be interested if anybody like looks at the guitar, like finds utility in that in some way. So just a question. Continuing with what I would call shape number three, looking at the absolute mode number four, that's gonna be the Lydian mode. Remembering that I'm using absolute mode numbers and having the major scale or mode number one, Ionian mode as our key to do that. So in other words, if the major scale is mode number one, Ionian mode, then the fourth of it would be mode number four, which would be the Lydian. So I'm looking at the Lydian mode, which means that we're going to be looking at the relative positions, the first through the seventh, but I'm going to keep the, the mode numbers within them constant as they relate to the major scale, which I think will help to orientate us a little bit. And then we have the intervals. Now the intervals, because it's a major mode, as we can see by the fact that it's an upper uh, case Roman numeral means that we want to compare the intervals to the major scale. The major scale intervals are pretty easy to name because they're either perfects or they're majors, right? The perfects will be there if they're perfects, normal perfects, and then everything else will be a major. And we're looking for the one interval that is different, which there will always be basically one interval different than the related major or minor intervals, in this case related to the major because it's a major mode. So we have a perfect first, a major second, a major third, and then here's the funny one. This should be a fourth, should be an augmented fourth. Now my formula in Excel is picking up a diminished fifth, two ways to say the same note. And I could try to fix my formula in Excel so it doesn't do that and it, it picks the right one every time, but that takes a lot of, I, I don't really feel like doing that right now. The formula is gonna be a lot longer to do that. So I'm just gonna deal with this. I'm saying, okay, this should be called in this context a fourth of some kind and therefore instead of a diminished fifth which is what this is saying uh we're going to say it's going to be a perfect fourth so it's a sixth note i mean sorry not a perfect fourth an augmented fourth all right and then we've got the perfect fifth the major six and the major seven all the same as the major scale now the lydian to me is is the major mode that's kind of least used uh in my estimation that might not be true for everyone. Uh, that's just what I think. And the reason is because obviously the major scale is uh, probably the, the most important. That's our key mode in Western music typically. And the Mixolydian, even if people don't know they're playing in Mixolydian and they're playing some bluesy one, four, five stuff, they're usually, I think believe you could describe it as basically Mixolydian because it has that flat seven. And then, and then there's the Lydian. So I think it's kind of the old, odd man out uh, to some degree on the majors, which is also why when you look at the pentatonic five notes out of seven scale, it's usually the one, it's one of the ones that's gonna be removed. You can see it's over here, it's not in the hamburger. And I'll, I'm gonna make this yellow so I can see that. So I'm gonna say, let's make this yellow. And then the other one that's, that's outside is obviously the Locrian, which is gonna be this one, I'll make that one yellow. And so those are the ones that are outside on the, on the pentatonic when I think of it as a five note uh, typically, but the five notes pentatonic related to the modes of the Ionian uh, mode or major scale and Aeolian or uh, the minor scale. So, so that's gonna, so that's gonna be uh, the, the Lydian. Now, when I look at my shape over here, then I call this shape number three because I named this shape the first number one. This would be shape number two on the top string. Therefore, this would be shape number three. That's just a convention, but many people use it. Many people also use the caged system. If I, know, if I wanna know what shape this is on the caged system, I have to look, if I'm thinking in Lydian, I have to say, okay, what is the related major, uh, major mode? 
Ionia that is. It would be the fifth of the Lydian, which is what I would call absolute mode number one or Ionian mode, which is at the C. So I can look for the C right here and say, okay, there it is. And I can build my shape from that note. And I can see that that's basically a D shape. So this would be a D shaped C chord. And therefore I can name this entire shape basically a D shape based on the idea that I have an open D over here. So this would, and so you have to deal with the fact that you're using a D shape to name a C chord that is shaped like a D in uh, open position in order to do that. But that is a, a nice way to ground us because we, if we looked at the D back here, that chord only has three notes uh, in it but it fits uniquely into the five note pentatonic shape which is why i can name the five note shape based on the three note you know open position which is nice but it doesn't fit uniquely into all seven note shape when i break the guitar into uh five you know four to five fret chunks so that's why the cage system works great if you you tie it first from the shape to the pentatonic and then add the two notes from the pentatonic to get to the major which i used to think was a little wonky to do if i'm not in the major scale or the minor scale because if i'm in lydian then i can't really use the pentatonic itself because it won't sound like lydian because lydian is going to be have its first the first of the lydian is outside of the pentatonic shape when I think about the normal pentatonic notes for the related major and minor scales. So, but I can easily add that. So then, so there's two ways that I'm going to be thinking of my shapes now. Uh, and I want to try to go back and forth so I can communicate this with other people and so that I can understand it, you know, myself. So we want to see the shape here in terms of the full shape, which I can call shape number three. I can call it a, a D shape if you if we want to call it that. And then I also want to break out within the shape, the 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 sub shapes within the shape, which I can break out into. Remember, there's five strings on the guitar plus a repeat string. These two are the same. So I can break it out into a a a two and then two string and then one string group of shapes so i can memorize the shapes with inside of it these patterns inside will repeat all the time a two string two string one string shape or from the pentatonic position i can think of it as a three string shape and a two string shape to further break the shapes down so i can see their components uh, more tightly which will repeat in all of the shapes now before i get into that just remember also that this dorian this shape here could also be called a Dorian shape and some people use that that I have seen and that's because you name it based on this top string so if I start from this D and I play through the shape I'm gonna be playing in a Dorian because I'm starting on you know the Dorian uh, mode right this, so you so you can name it the Dorian shape noting that when you do that that means, of course, you're assuming that you're starting from that top note. If you're not starting, you could play any of the modes, obviously, within here. We're going to be playing Lydian within here. But that's just another naming convention that you could use. I call this the Dorian shape because if I played it and made that top note the focal point, I'd be playing in the Dorian. All right, so so then we're going to say then then within the shape, I'm going to break it out into the, the two note, two note, two string, two string, one string shape which is gonna be my house analogy, house double stop, and then the double stop house, and then the two note per string flat is what I'm gonna call that. And that's useful because I think this box is quite easy to see. You'll see it all over the guitar. Here's the box. Behi in front of the box, you're gonna have a double stop. Behind the box, we're gonna have a double stop. So you can find that all the way across. And the notes within the box will always correspond to the modes that we're looking in so we can basically look at that box and name the modes on where they live in that box which i'm going to call the house and similarly with the double stop although the double stop kind of changes a little bit when you go from the double stop box to the box double stop here versus here okay and then we're also going to look at this in terms of a pentatonic shape which many people 
see this way. They see this hamburger all over the fretboard, meaning they look for the this pattern where you've got the two, 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 and you can see that everywhere you have a D uh, in our shape uh, here, it, that's going to be the start of the hamburger. So do 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 do. You have here. If I went down here, you'd have do do, and then it repeats, you know, up top, uh, up here. So so then and then so then you have uh, that shape, and then it goes here to here to do, and then do 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 do. So you can see that that shape all over the fretboard. Now the problem with that shape, of course, is that it's only it doesn't have all all the notes and the scale in it. So how can I augment that shape to have all the notes in the scale? I can add, I'm gonna call this the top bun, a hat to the top bun. So like a cap on it. So the visor's pointing towards the hole up here, which is the sun, that's the beach. And the sun comes up over here. And then we're gonna say over here, you have to add something to the foot of the bun. And I'm gonna say, because we added the visor in the top, it's top heavy. And therefore you have to also add this bit to the end of it. And then we also have the the barbell. So we have the hamburger and the barbell shape. When we think about the pentatonic, the barbell, we only play the outer notes, which have been shifted up because of the earthquake or the kink in the tuning. So it looks a little wonky because this A would normally be right under the E and, this, and these two would be on top of each other. So that's, those are gonna be the two shapes that will basically work in. So that's the idea. So first, how do I, where am I on, on this shape? Well, if, if, if I know this is a Dorian shape, then I want to be in uh, the Lydian. Well, if I compare it to the major scale, the Dorian is the second of the major scale and the Lydian is the fourth. So if I'm starting here and I think of myself in the major scale, I could say that's the second and then third and fourth. So that means that this F is going to be the, my starting point if I want to play this shape in uh, Lydian. And then if I think about how that will happen, where, where is this shape? Well, in my, in my house, my double stop house analogy, I'm going to do two analogies. This is going to get confusing, but I think they're both useful. In my double stop house analogy, you can see down here that, that this is the bottom of the double stop house, which is the same up here. So this is the bottom of the box. And uh, the, the Phrygian then is in the bottom of the box, meaning this is like the house, I'm gonna call it C's house, and it looks towards the ocean, and, and the Lydian, I'm sorry, I might've said, Phry the, the Lydian is on the bottom floor, still looking towards the ocean of uh, the house. So then if I look at the other analogy, my hamburger and barbell, which is a pentatonic analogy typically, uh, then this note is outside of the hamburger. And that's because the Lydian, again, is the one that we kick out uh, when you're doing a five notes versus seven. So we have to add it back in, which is gonna be the cap. So it's the, actually the hat, the visor of the hat that you put on the top bun of the hamburger. That's where the Lydian is. And then if it's not too sunny, then you take it off and you get rid of the, the Lydian. So obviously it's crucial to have it here if we're gonna be playing in the Lydian mode. And then the other side of it down here uh, is in is in uh, the the bottom of the box again for the house double stop. And in terms of our analogy with the hamburger barbell, it's not on the ends of the barbell. It's in the handle or middle part of the barbell because the middle part are the ones that we don't play in a pentatonic. When we play the pentatonic, it's the one that's removed. So it's the one on the left side of the barbell, but not at the end of the barbell. Okay, so that was a long intro. So let's go, let's go through it then. We're gonna say then, if this is, we have here, we're gonna start there. Again, the bottom of the double stop box or house or the, the bill of uh, the cap that's on the hamburger. And then we go, then we go boom, boom. This is the middle part of the hamburger uh, or the two note per string flat. And then we're gonna go do it. Now we have to go outside of the hamburger, do it, do it, do it. So now we, we have this added bit on the outside of the hamburger supporting the base of the hamburger because we had to put the cap on. So we had to balance it out, boom, boom, boom. And then we go, and then we go, 
Uh, boom, boom. So now we're in the barbell. This part is part of the barbell or part of the pentatonic. And then this is, again, the inside that we wouldn't normally play if it were a pentatonic, but we will play when we add the seven notes. If we look at the, the intervals, let's think of the intervals. We're gonna say, to do the first, let's just pull this up. The first, we're gonna go to the second, that's pinky to pointer. So I know that's a whole step. Be, uh, because that's that's a whole step away when it's pinky to pointer and then we're going to go from uh, the second to the third that's going to be a whole step just like it is for the major scale but then when I go from the third to the fourth we're going to have in this case a whole step which gets us to that weird and this should be once again the, the interval of a six note away augmented fourth so now we're on the weird one which makes sense because it's the Locrian and and that's the one that's off and we had to take and then we take another off step from the major scale which is a half step from four to five and that brings us back in sync and then when we go from five to six we're, we're back to the normal which would be a whole step for normal related to the major scale and then when we go from to the six to the seven that's going to be a whole step and then when we go from seven to eight, that's gonna be a half step back to, in essence, the one. So notice that the Lydian, like, like two out of the three major modes have that characteristic half step before getting home. The odd one out is the Mixolydian, which doesn't have that leading tone because it has that, that uh, flat seven. So that's gonna be the, the, the whole steps and half steps if I was to count this out. We could say if I start here, this is going to be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and then let's do our our uh, intervals. So let's go from here to here. Duh, duh. So if I go from here, pinky to pointer, I know that that's going to be a whole step, and that's a uh, a the second of the Lydian. A major mode is a two note away major second as we would expect. The inverse of that is 12 minus two, which would be a 10 note away minor seven. So if I play this from top to bottom, two note away major second from bottom to top, G to F, 10 note away minor seven. I can count that minor seven just to get an idea of that because if I go from here, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. gets me to the F. And if I go, if I count this way, I go five, four, three, two, because there's five notes between the strings. All right, I also know that the second of the Lydian, uh, what mode is it? Remember that I'm using absolute mode numbers, number four, as it relates to the major scale. So if this, is mo if this is mode number one, Ionian or major scale, the Lydian is the fourth related to it, which means that if I started on the first, I'd count up three to get to it. So if I was on one, I'd have to count up two, three, four, th count up three to get to four. So the formula then to get to this one is I can say, well, if that's, if it's the fourth mode, absolute mode number four, I'm gonna take that minus one which is three plus the second that I'm on two, and that gives me to absolute what I would call absolute mode number five, which is the mixolydian mode, which is the what I would call like the bluesy mode. It has that flat seven in it. Where does that mode live? When we look at our our house analogy, it doesn't live in the house in the box even though it's a major mode because that's like the bluesy one that has that flat seven it hangs out with the minors so it's over here actually in the meat of the hamburger and or or it's in the flat or you can call it the meat of the hamburger uh that's the one shape that's the same when i break the shapes out into a two string two string one string versus a three string two string setup so it's the meat of the hamburger from the hamburger analogy that makes sense because I, the hamburger is kind of like an American food in my, in my, I think, I don't know if there is such a thing as an American food. We, we all our food is stolen, I think, but it's, or it's, it's all, we don't steal it, right? <laughs> all our food has been brought to us, but 
or it's been whatever. So in any case, it's the meat of the hamburger. So it's the meat. Okay, let's go to the next one. We're we're gonna say the next one is gonna be uh, duh, 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 the third. So now we're on the third. So the third of mode number four, Lydian, is going to be a, th a four note away major third. How do I know that? Because I can count down, that would be five, four. Inverse would be 12 minus four, which would be uh, 12 minus four is eight, which would be an uh, eight note away minor six. So if I have a major, the inverse will be minor. So I want to see this shape. Whenever I see this shape, this staggered shape, unless it's in the fault line, that's going to be a four note away major third. The inverse, therefore, from bottom to top, from A to F, is an eight note away uh, minor six. Okay, and then I know that the third of absolute mode number four, Lydian, is four minus one plus the three uh, is going to be four, five, six, seven. Wait, four. Uh, what is that? Four minus one is three, plus three is going to be six, and that's going to be the Aeolian mode, a minor mode, the main minor mode. And where does the minor live? Well, the minor again isn't in our house, in our house analogy, and uh, instead it's in the flat, the one that's the same, whether we break it out in the house analogy, the two string, two string, one string versus the uh, hamburger barbell analogy, three string, two string. Uh, it's in the meat of the hamburger, as we can see once again on the right side on the hamburger, if you think about it that way. All right, let's go to the next one. We're gonna say the next one is going to be the fourth. This is the funny one because it's the fourth mode Lydian where it has that fourth interval, which is the weird interval. And the fourth interval, therefore, is a six note away and augmented uh, fourth, which is going to be from here to, 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 to augmented fourth. Do I get my finger in right? Uh, okay. So boom, boom. So there we have it. Is that right? Where Where's my fingering going here? I'm a little... All right, I think I got it. So so that's the weird one. So so uh, how do I know that? How do I know it's six notes away? Because I count that up. Five, ten, nine, eight, seven, six. What's the inverse? Weird, it's 12 minus six, which is also six. So if I look at this one, that's that tensiony sound. It's going to be what I would normally call a flat fifth, but we need the fourth here, so we use the other name, which is a six note away uh, augmented fourth. And if I play the inverse, it's still a six note away flat fifth or augmented fourth, right? All right. And then what's the what's the the if I the mode? We're going to say, well, if I'm looking at the fourth of mode number four, uh, Lydian, four minus one is three plus four is seven, gives us the Locrian. So it also makes sense that that's the weird interval and it lands on, and it's the Locrian, that's the weird interval. Now, where is the Locrian mode? It's always in the house. It's behind the, the, uh, the, the penthouse, it's in what I would call the attic in our house analogy. It's always there. And then, and then, uh, when we look at our hamburger, uh, our hamburger bell, bell, bell analogy, where is it going to be? Well, it's not in the hamburger or barbell, at least not in the pentatonic. It's the added one. It's the one we remove because it's the crazy Locrian, right? But it's right behind the C. It kind of supports the the bottom bun of the hamburger so it doesn't tip over when we put the cap on the hamburger, which has the bill leaning to the right. So you have to offset it back to the left. So you have this kind of Z shape that you've now made the hamburger into. All right, so then we're gonna go to the next one, which is gonna be the fifth. The fifth of mode number four, Lydian, is gonna be back to the normal, which is gonna be more comfortable on the fingers here, which is a nice seven note away, perfect fifth. Seven note away, perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because I can count down five, 10, nine, eight, seven, inverse 12 minus seven, which is five, five notes away, perfect fourth. So if I see that shape, I, I want to know that shape because that shape, whether I play a major or minor, will have a perfect fifth. So, that, so if I play this A, it would be a major, 
If I put my, my other finger down on this, this one, that would be a minor, but either way, you're gonna have that perfect fifth. So that's gonna be an important interval. So we go boom, boom, okay? And then if I invert it, it would be uh, a five note away perfect fourth. And we know the fifth of mode number four, Lydian, is four minus one, which is three plus five, five, six, seven, eight. There's only seven modes, so eight minus seven is one. One is the major scale or mode one, the Lydian mode. Where's that housed in our analogy? It's in the house, it's in the top right of the penthouse of the house all the time. With regards to our hamburger barbell analogy, it is of course within our five note pentatonic. We're not gonna remove the major mode uh, and it's in the base of the hamburger supporting the hamburger. It's the most load bearing part of the hamburger I'm gonna imagine, especially when we put the hamburger bill on top which is why we need the added support sometimes to support C, the load bearing part of the bun with uh, the, the, the locrian behind it. All right, so then I'm gonna, that's my story. So then we're gonna go to the next one. We're gonna say, all right, then, then let's go to the sixth of uh, the Lydian. The sixth of the Lydian is a nine note away major six. Nine note away major six. How do I know? Because I can count up five, 10, nine, there's the nine notes away. Inverse 12 minus nine is three. That would be a three note away minor third. So if I see that shape, I'm like, okay, I just wanna know that as a nine note away major six and therefore the inverse is gonna be, has to be minor. It's gonna be a three note away minor third. Okay, and so then I'm gonna say, all right, and then I know that the sixth of mode number four Lydian is four minus one is three plus six, which is nine. There's only seven modes. So nine minus seven is two, giving us the Dorian uh, mode. So the Dorian mode, where does that live? Well, it's not in the house because it's a minor mode. And the only minor that lives in there is the, is the uh, Phrygian that rocks out the, the, the heaviest minor in the basement. So it's over here doing its own thing in the double stop. It's either in the double stop with the G at the top, or it's gonna be in uh, the, the double stop with the A, and so it's on the bottom. So it kind of moves around on the double stops on the top and bottom, whether we're on the box double stop or house double stop versus the double stop box. In terms of the hamburger barbell analogy, it's all hamburger bun. The, 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 the Dorian encompasses the hamburger. You can define the hamburger by going from the, the Dorian to Dorian, cell to cell, defining the hamburger. So, so there is the Dorian. All right, let's go to the next one. We're gonna say now we're on the seventh of the uh, Lydian mode. So the seventh, of course, like a, like a normal uh, major mode is gonna be a a uh, 11 note away major seven. How do I know that? Because I can count up, it would be five, 10, 15, uh, 14, 13, wait, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, okay. And the inverse would be 12 minus 11, which is one, which would be a one note away uh, minor second. So if I play this way, I wanna just know that shape as a 11 note away major seven. I can see that kind of because I can say, wait a sec, did I, I'm not on the right note, am I? It's back here, it's kind of hard to reach over here. That was an. It's kind of hard to reach on my acoustic here because I'm hitting the corner. I can kind of know that because if I see that that's my octave, I can go right behind the octave and that's gonna give me that, that shape. All right, so hopefully I didn't confuse people. I had my finger on the wrong bit for a while, but that's fine. We know that the seventh of mode number four, Lydian, is uh, four minus one, which is three, plus seven, which would be seven, eight, nine, 10, minus only seven modes. 10 minus seven is three. That gives, me, uh, gives us the Phrygian. So where does the Phrygian live? It's a minor mode, it hangs out in the house. It's the only minor that hangs out in the house. It hangs out in the basement, rocking and rolling because it's got that heavy minor second, therefore it's more minor than the main minor, uh, annoying 
the the everybody in the house. And then and then uh, if I look at the hamburger uh, the hamburger barbell analogy, it's at the left of the what I would call the minor side of the barbell, remembering that usually we only play the ends of the barbell if it was a pentatonic versus the full major scale. We play the ends of the barbell and it's the heaviest one. Therefore, it and A are on the end of the barbell because that's the most weight. Whereas the mix, whereas the the Dorian, al although a cool mode, it's the least heavy because it not only has a major second, it's also got another major, right? Whereas these two only the the this the the Aeolian has one major second, whereas the Phrygian has no major components. It's all minor, man. All right, <clears throat> and then uh, it's also okay. We'll leave it at that. Okay, so then, and then we can go back to the octave. So there's the octave. Whew, a little tired today. I couldn't sleep last night for some reason. My back was hurting. Anyway, so let's, let's do a joke before we go back the other way. So negative, it's about negative repercussions. We need to stop these crazy politicians from spending money claiming like it's for our own good that they're spending our money it's our money that they're spending for our own good it's ridiculous because because if those if they don't stop there's going to be huge negative repercussions huge repercussions i tell you like a like a t-rex dinosaur in a small enclosed cave farting that's how it's going to like the repercussions bouncing off the walls would be definitely deadly i'm honestly i I think spending too much time in that small cave with the farting T-Rex is, is what happened to Joe Biden. That's how he got all, that's what happened to him. And, and if there's one thing that all Americans can agree on, it's that we don't want the country to end up looking like that guy. That's not, we don't need that to happen. Get us out of the, get, get the gassy dinosaurs out of the cave and expand the cave of influence through decentralized free market policies for crying out loud. I mean, it, it, it's, it's not rocket science around here. We, we, already know, we already know what works. It's not like we don't know what works. Just do the job. Unclogging the, the enclosed cave of influence like a plumber unclogging a toilet. Seriously. I mean, I, I, th I think we would be better off hi hiring a plumber than almost, than almost a certainly almost unhonest career politician to do the job they probably know how to unplug it better than the politician does so so i i and i don't even care i'd hire a plumber to do to as a politician right and, and i don't even care what the news the news is going to complain about it because they're going to say well the europeans are going to laugh at us because your your politician plumbers oversized oversized plumber crack is hanging out as he's doing his work and, and to me i'm like whatever dude as long as he gets the job done i don't care what i don't care what they what they say over there as long as he he's doing the he's unclogging the toilet so it doesn't it's not a it's not supposed to be a glamorous job when the politicians are unclogging the the cave toilet getting the t-rex out of there it's not it's not glorious but the job needs to get the job needs to get done that's how i see it anyways that was more of a rant than a joke. That wasn't even funny. Okay, whatever. I think I could have done it better. Let's go. I'm just tired. Is there other, it would have been funny if I wasn't tired. Let's go back the other way. So now we're going to go back this way and say, okay, so we're going to compare everything to this F now. So if I say that is like the first or the eighth and we go behind it, then we're going to the seventh. So the seventh of mode number four, Lydian, is as a major mode, an 11 note away major seven. How do I know that? Because if I went this way from E to F, that would be one note away, and the inverse would be 12 minus one, which would be uh, an 11 note away major seven. So if I see this shape, I usually go from E to F, and I'm like, oh, that's a one note away minor second. I hope I said that right. And then the, that means that going the other way, 
F to E would be an 11 note away uh, major seven. All right, let's right, and let's bring it back to the six. So we'll go duh, 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 and compare the sixth to uh, here, here, to here. Okay, so that's going to be, let's do it this way. That's going to be then uh, the sixth is going to be of Phrygian is a normal six for a major mode, which would be a nine note away uh, major six. How do I know that? Because if I count from the D, it would be five, four, three. So that would be a three note away uh, minor third. 12 minus three is a nine, nine note away major six. So if I see that shape, I'm usually thinking from D to F, that's going to be a, a, a minor third, three note away minor third. And therefore the inverse from F to D, three note away major six. Let's go back down to the uh, fifth. Bring it on down to the fifth. So we know that the fifth of the, uh, mo the mode number four Lydian is like normal, a five note away perfect, a seven note away perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because if I count from the C down, it would be five notes away. That would be a perfect fourth. Inverse 12 minus five would be seven, seven note away perfect fifth. So if I see this stacked thing, I'm usually going from top to bottom thinking, oh, that's a perfect fourth, five note away perfect fourth. But if I go the other way, then therefore bottom to top, seven note away perfect fifth. All right, let's go back then to the fourth. Now this is the funny one, of course, the funny one, and that's going to be a a uh, for the for the mode number four Lydian. The fourth is the funny one, which is the Locrian mode, coincidentally enough, and it's going to be a uh, six note away. We're going to call it an augmented fourth, which is the same as a flat fifth. But we need a fourth, therefore augmented fourth rather than flat fifth. And how do I know it's six notes away? Well, if I count from this B up, it would be five, six, which would be a flat fifth or augmented fourth. And 12 minus six is also six. So whether I go from, when I see that shape, I can see it and say going from top to bottom, flat fifth or augmented fourth. It's also, if I go from bottom to top, flat fifth or augmented fourth. So that's gonna be our tensiony shape. Whenever I see that shape, I'm, th I'm thinking tension, right? I'm adding, tension usually that I'm going to end up resolving somewhere. Okay, so then we're going to go, okay, and then let's go to the uh, third. So the third is going to be, do, 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 uh, where, where am I? I'm here, and I'm going to go to the third, which is this A. So that's going to be the third of mode number four. Lydian is a four note away major third. How do I know? Because if I count down, it'd be five, 10, nine, eight. That would be an eight note away minor six. 12 minus eight is four, four note away uh, major third. Therefore, if I see this shape, I'm usually thinking that's kind of a funny shape a little bit, but I'm thinking that's going to be an, a minor six and i probably might not be as familiar with the minor six as the major which would look like this up here and then you go back one so nine note away major uh uh and then back and so but if i take the inverse then going from f to a that's going to be a three note away major third uh i mean a four note away major third four note away major third all right I'm going back then to the G, to the G. That's going to be the second of the uh, the second of the mode number four Lydian is a two note away major second. How do I know that? Because if I count from here from the G, it'd be five ten, and twelve minus uh, ten is two. Two note away major second. So if I see that shape, I'm usually going from top to bottom, which is a ten note away minor seven. Therefore, if I go from bottom to top, that must be a two note away major second. And that brings me back home. All right, let's go then to uh, this from this F to this F. See if I can do this a little bit faster because I'm wearing down here. I'm wearing down fast today. Wearing down fast like a river 
wearing down a sand dune or something. I don't where can't even think of a analogy for crying out loud. All right, let's go to this one. We're gonna go from uh, down to here to here. So now we're gonna do it down here. So we're at the bottom of what I would call uh, the double stop uh, or or the box double stop. So we're once again starting at the bottom of the box because it's a major mode. It's on the ocean facing side, but it's not in the penthouse where C is. And so that's where we're going to uh, start and we'll end of course at the bottom of the box uh, as well. And we're starting at, and, and in terms of the, of the barbell, we're starting in the middle of the barbell from the pentatonics perspective. Normally we only play the outer notes, which would be these two. It's a little funky because it's been shifted up due to the earthquake or fault lines there. We don't normally play the inner notes. So now we are gonna add the inner note, which is gonna be staggered. You have the one on the top inner to the left and the bottom inner to the right. That's where our hands would go. If you saw this as a barbell, if it was a barbell out here, you know, but it's been shifted, so it looks a little wonky but you'd be holding up. Let me just show you this just so we can get an idea uh, somewhere else. So if, if the barbell wasn't on the fault line, uh, it would look like this, right? Du -du. So we would only usually play the outside and then you've got the sides of the barbell. This is where our hands would go and it's staggered. So the hands are on the top left and then the bottom right. And then if we're playing the full seven notes, these are the two notes that have been excluded, which we would then add back, which of course we're gonna have to do if we're playing the mode number four Lydian, because that's that's the first of the mode. So it's an important note if you're playing in that mode. You can't just kick it out of its own mode. You can't kick the first out of its own mode, even though like if you were playing the main minor or the major, then the Lydian is the one you, you're probably gonna kick it out. You're like, dude, you're kind of, you're not up to par uh, for those. But this is like Lydian's game. So they have, it's set in the rules here. So it's gotta be, okay. So that's gonna be that one. So let's go ahead and say, all right, let's just go through this one. We're gonna say from the first to the second is gonna be a two note away, major second, boom, boom. The inverse of that would be 12 minus two, which would be a 10 note away, minor seven. So if I went from G to A, 10 note away, minor seven. Let's go to the third, the third. Now here's where it gets wonky and we have to understand that the fault line happens between these two. There was an earthquake and, the, and that shifted this whole bottom bit up. So all of our shapes are now wonkified. They've been wonkified, still standing, still sturdy, structurally sound, but they look funny, okay? So that's okay. So now we're gonna say that the third of uh, mode number four, Lydian, is going to be a four note away major third. When I see that shape stacked on top of each other, I'm like, no, wait, that's like, that should be a five note away perfect fourth. But no, uh, that's because of the, the wonk that has happened. Uh, it's a four note away uh, m major third. You might also think that this shape back here from here to here from here to here should be the major third but no shifted up now this stacked shape when you're on the fault line between those two strings is the four note away major third all right so don't let that throw you off for every other time you see that shape from top to bottom would be a perfect fourth five note away perfect fourth okay so then so so that means that uh that the, the, the 12 minus four would be eight, which would be an eight note away uh, minor nine. So if I play this top to bottom, that's gonna be a four note away major third, bottom to top, eight note away minor ninth. And we also know that the third of mode number four Lydian is four minus one, which is three plus three is six. That would be mode number six Aeolian, the main minor mode, the minor scale, which of course isn't in the house, in the house analogy, but rather it's it's on its own in the double stop when you look at the double stop box or the two note per string flat or meat of the hamburger or in the analogy for the barbell hamburger, it's at the right side of the barbell, the barbell usually looking like this if it wasn't for the earthquake, the fault line, 
It's uh, it's on the on, on song, it's on the left side of the barbell, and the barbell consists of the heaviest minor modes, which the a the main minor on the bottom, and then the Phrygian, which is actually even heavier or more minor on top, and then the two core majors on the other side, and then your handles go your hands go here, which you don't even play if you were doing the five note pentatonic, but you would play on the seven note, which we are doing the seven note here because. The, we're on the Lydian, and the Lydian is in the handle, and so you have to keep that in as we discussed before. All right, so now we're going to go to the fourth, which is the funny one of mode number four, Lydian, uh, and it's the Locrian mode. So it's all everything is funny about it, and we're going to go here to here and say that's going to be a six note away augmented fourth, even though it says diminished fifth here. Same thing, but we need a fourth, therefore augmented fourth instead of diminished fifth you can look at it and say wait a sec that looks like it should be a perfect fifth that shape but no the perfect fifth would be up here because of the kink in the tuning because of the fault line between these two therefore this shape which looks like a perfectly normal uh perfect fifth seven note away perfect fifth is actually an augmented fourth or a flat fifth so i can see that because from here to here would be five and then this would be six. So it's six notes away. And the inverse would be 12 minus six, which would also be six note away, augmented fourth or flat fifth. So if I play this from top to bottom or bottom to top, that's gonna be a perfect fourth or augmented fifth. All right, so when I see that shape, again, it looks normal. It only look, it's only the funny one here because of the fault line. Every other place you see that, you're like, oh, that's, I play that all the time. That distance would be a perfect fifth. And, but here it's, it's that tensiony sound. Okay, and so then I also know that the fourth of mode number four Lydian is four minus one, which is three plus four, which is eight, uh, which is, wait, four, three plus four, four is seven. Can't you count? That's gonna be a <laughs> Locrian. And where's the Locrian located? Well, in our house analogy, it's in the house, it's up in the attic, it's in the top of the attic of the house top attic of the house as you can see here and in the hamburger and double stop or hamburger barbell uh, pentatonic analogy it's not on the ends of the barbell it's in the middle of the barbell next to the C so it's staggered on the bottom part here that we would have to add uh, if we're going from pentatonic to seven note seven note all right so then we're going to go to the next one which is going to be the fifth of mode number four the lydian which is going to be back to normal which is a seven note away perfect fifth although it looks funny because normally the fifth would be back here but because of the earthquake because of the fault line it's up here i can count that out by saying from here to here would now be five notes instead of from here to here so five six seven seven note away perfect fifth the inverse would be 12 minus seven which would be a a five note away perfect fourth. So if I play this from here to here, uh, top to bottom, seven note away perfect uh, fifth. But if I go from bottom to top, five note away perfect fourth. We also know that the fifth of mode number four Lydian is four minus one, which is three plus five, five, six, seven, eight. There's only seven modes. Eight minus seven is one, giving us mode number one, Ionian, otherwise known as the major scale. Where is that located? It's in the penthouse of the house, looking up towards the hole, which is the ocean in our analogy or story here. And in terms of the pentatonic hamburger barbell shape, you can see the barbell more clearly here without the uh, shift. Uh, and it's on the right hand side where the, the weights are on the barbell. The, and of course we would play it if it was a pentatonic side and the C is on the bottom and then the second biggest uh, uh most used major mode mixolydian on the top which has been staggered here because of course again the earthquake there was an earthquake i don't know if i told you this but like there was an earthquake and it staggered everything so let's go to the next one we're going to say the next one is going to be the sixth uh, the sixth of mode number four, Lydian, is back to normal for a major mode, or it is normal for a major mode, nine note away, major six. Now, again, if I look at this shape, 
I usually think, hey, that should be a 10 note away, which would be a minor seven, but because of the kink in the tuning. Now the kink in the tuning or fault line is between these two. There's not a fault line between these two, but this interval is still affected because the fault line between these two strings is still in effect when I go between you know, this string up here and the string down here, right? So that's why if I count up, it would be five and then 10 and then back to nine, nine note away major six and then 12 minus nine is gonna be a three note away minor third. So if I see that shape, I'm like, okay, I gotta adjust for the fault line because there's a fault line between these two. That means that's gonna be a nine note away major six and the inverse therefore three note away minor third. All right, let's go to the next one. And then we're gonna say that's gonna be the seventh, 11 note away, uh, 11 note away major seven. And I can count that up by saying this is gonna be five, 10, 11, and uh, 12 minus 11 is one, therefore the inverse is a one note away minor second. So if I play from top to bottom, 11 note away major seven, bottom to top, one note away minor uh, second. All right, so there's, there is uh, that one. I should go back the other way, but I'm a little tired here, a little tired. Let's just noodle around a bit. You know, I had an idea with these over here i've been looking at like other shapes and i might i've been looking i heard someone talking about two note per string shapes and i was looking at this uh and so like if i was playing on this c and i looked at this it goes boom 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 i can actually play two note per string leaning backwards so c d so no, it'd be C, D, E, F, G, A, and then B, C, which is kind of weird, but I think that's kind of neat because that means that I always have two notes per string, although it's a little wonky to go backwards like that. And then I can go back the other way. So I think that could actually be useful when I'm when I'm trying to go in between uh, in between our five note pentatonic shape. So I was going to play with that idea. And uh, so I thought that was and 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 if you look at that, it kind of makes sense because you can do this on any because then I can. Notice it only makes sense if I play kind of from the fifth fret, maybe the third up, because I have to lean back. So if I'm up here on this side, I can lean back this way, whereas obviously I can't do it. People probably don't do this as much. So I'm thinking this might be something that will break people out of the box, maybe to get a, a few different lines than, than the, because, because we're not thinking about leaning forward all the time, which we're typically doing because we're usually starting from the open position and then moving this way. But instead, if we think about ourselves starting from this position and play the scale kind of leaning backwards, and most of the time when we play the scales, we have like three notes, uh, right? Three notes per string with like a two note in there or something. have three note per string like this right which gives you some kind of a, uh that that's going to affect your tone if you're just like improvising i would think or your rhythm i guess but your rhythm will be affected differently if you do if you like are improvising maybe with a two note uh per string thing right so if i'm always doing
course, of course, then you can you can kind of see this as your baseline, and then also see that I'm in this shape, which is this is my shape number one. And then and then overlay on top of that my idea of the two note per string, which kind of blends into the shape. Kind of, and then if I was to play, like like when I think about that, it's like, well, how do I see that shape? Notice it kind of makes sense because if I played my, if I made this into my C major, it would be this would be the first, uh, the third, and the fifth. So if I just look at that shape, this shape is not usually how a lot of people like make their majors up here because usually we would lean forward to it like a bar chord like this. But this bar chord is actually inverted, right? Because because now you got the one, five, one, and then the three is down here. Whereas this actually is easier to see what you're actually doing because even though it might be a little bit more difficult to finger because now you've got the normal, the, the, the one is the lowest and then the third and then the fifth. It's not, it's not inverted, right? So I could see that shape and then I can, and then I can go up here and say, well, what if I played went up to, to the next note in my in my scale up to here that would be a D that would be a minor which means I would be playing this and instead of this note I'd be playing here and here so it'd be do 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 and what's interesting is if I just put those two together so here's be the, like my major let's make these like let's make this like a different color what if I made this like uh, well, let me, uh, here, fill, not the fill, outline, I'm going to make it, did it do it? Okay. And then I'm going to make this also outline, and then, oh no, that was the wrong one. Crap undo so this one i'm going to make it green boom and then this one i'll make it green boom uh this one make it green boom so right and then if i just look at if i put those two together that's my scale right so now i'm gonna like okay well if i just put those two Together, I have a two note per string uh, scale. So it would just be, it would just be going from here, the the first of my first triad to the first of the second triad would be C D, and then the 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 the, the third of the first triad D E to the second to the third of the second triad F, and then the fifth of the first triad is G to the fifth of the second is A. And then I'd have to go down one more to finish it out to get to this B and the C. So that's kind of interesting because I can just see it as like my triad, my, 
my triads like this. So there's that one. And then here would be the minor. And that gives me my scale between them by just going the notes between them would be C, D, E, F, G, A. And then if I extended it down one more, it'd be B, C. So that's kind of interesting. And I can do that all the way up. So I can do that like here, because if I went, it's like, like here's my C triad. Duh, duh, so it goes, uh, duh, 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 and then D's the minor, which would be uh, D's, wait, D's the minor here. Duh, duh, duh. And then if I go to the E up here, that would also be a minor. Duh, duh, duh. So if I was to build this one, it would be going from D, E, and then F, G, and then A, B, and, and then and then C, D, right? So then I could just say, well, between these two, it'd be D, C, wait, D, E, and then, and then uh, D, E, F, F, G, A, B, C, B, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C, D. So, so that's kind of interesting because then I, if, I think that works on every top string so if I and that means I can go from C which would be this would be my from here to here this would be my Ionian if I play this shape down that would be my Ionian or major mode and then if I played from here to here and played two two note strings down this way that would be the Dorian and then if I played here two notes that would be the the uh, Phrygian and then from here to here that would be the and play that back that would be the uh, Lydian, and and then I could bounce up here for the Mixolydian, which kind of runs into the side here, but you can play most of it down. So a G, A, B, C, D, E, and then you'd have to play that F because you can't go back further, and then G. And then I have the Aeolian between, between these two, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, G and that and then and then you've got the low green which is the weird one right so that would be so that's kind of an so that's another that's another way to see like the scale that I don't think many people look at the guitar that way because they're usually we're usually leaning forward like I say and so so I'm thinking that might be interesting to play with to get different lines different patterns, different rhythms, playing two notes per string, as opposed to the, th the three note and two note pentatonics when we cut it up into fives, or the three note per string patterns, uh, which always have three notes per string, which is going to give you a different pattern or rhythm uh, that you'll probably gravitate towards. So I don't know. I don't know. Let me know if anyone kind of uses that, if anyone is watching this because <laughs> I think that's kind of interesting. Anyways, I'm going to stop there.